Hey guys, it's Adam from Tested, and I'm very excited because I am leaving tomorrow morning for Comic-Con in San Diego. Uh, now, I am able to tell you what my costume is because this will air after Comic-Con. My costume is gonna be King Arthur from Excalibur. And we've got a whole set of videos to put up on Tested and Verve for the making of my armor, which I went to Cornwall, England and helped master armor and designer Terry English make me a replica suit of armor that he built for the movie Excalibur. Ah! I also, and we covered this on Tested, built my own movie accurate prop Excalibur sword out of aluminum and brass. Unfortunately, it's on its way to Comic-Con. I'm gonna reveal it there, but I have a problem. And that is, I wanna be King Arthur, I wanna walk the floor, but I can't do it even with my prop aluminum sword because it's too close to being a weapon. The organizers of Comic-Con won't allow me to hit the floor with something weapon-like. So I had to improvise, and what I decided to do <clears throat> was to consult the LARPing community, live action role playing. And I went to our friends at Kalamasil and I ordered myself one of these. This is the model, uh, the Novice 2 Longsword. It is a foam sword. You cannot really, I mean, I guess you could hurt someone, but you'd have to really work at it. And it is very close to Excalibur in its primary form factors. The guard is similar, uh, the handle is, and the pommel. I am going to make it even more accurate with some color using several techniques. I'm gonna use some silver uh, on the blade. I'm gonna use some gold leaf on the guard and the pommel and some silver on the handle. And uh, if I'm right, within the next hour or two, we should have a passable foam LARPing replica of Arthur's Excalibur, at least from John Borman's film. Whoppa! All right, the first step here is I'm going to make the guard and the pommel uh, gold and I could spray paint them gold. I would guess that this urethane should probably take that, but I'm instead gonna do gold leaf, or gilding, really. Um, I am gonna protect my parts with masking tape first, so I don't get gold leaf where I don't want gold leaf. Um, I did some testing of these techniques on another LARPing sword I bought, yet sometimes I actually pre-game my one day builds, just to make sure I don't go down any wrong avenues, you know. Uh, and I am, uh, I'm gonna be using a fairly um, quick and dirty gold leafing method. There are refined, centuries old refined methods for applying gold leaf to things. Um, I am not using those methods. I'm using the quick and dirty kind of uh, art store method uh, and I'll show you those pieces in just a second. Go. I think I wanna chop off that little nubbin. So what is the quick and dirty method for gold leafing I'm talking about? It is spray adhesive gold leafing. But bear with me, this is a pretty darn good system as far as I've been able to determine. Also, sorry, let me start with this. This is an actual gold, it's fake gold leafing. Totally fine for me, I don't need to put real 24 karat gold on this. I don't need the bling. Um, but gold leafing is a process where you lay down an adhesive and then you stick the gold leaf on that adhesive um, with some brushes and then you buff it out. It's really, really straightforward. Uh, in order to properly gild something, you want that adhesive to be super thin, super fine. Uh, you'd use an adhesive size is what it's called, but I am going again, as I said, with the quick and dirty method of spray adhesive, which is specifically made for gold leafing. Um, it is effectively like a Super 77, but it wets out and is a little thinner than your standard stuff. All right, we're ready. So let's start with the spray adhesive. I want uniform coverage all over. I don't want any drips. I don't want it to be too spotty because any texture that I apply with the spray adhesive will actually show up in the gold leaf.
Now, one of the keys with an adhesive like this is you have a certain amount of working time. You don't have an endless amount of working time. Um, and you don't want to take an endless amount because it eventually can over dry. You want to apply the gold leaf while it's super tacky. Okay, now while I'm still waiting for it to get as set as it needs to be, I'm going to peel off my masking, which I can do because the gold leaf won't stick anywhere I haven't put adhesive. Uh, and that's a nice little feature. There we go. A certain amount of tack. Feels really good. Feels pretty good. Feels still a little too wet. I know, you're wondering why I don't use something like Rub and Buff for this. And I could. I could, to be quite honest, Rub and Buff would probably work great on a, on a heavy, hard urethane rubber like this. I've just decided today to do gold leafing instead. Um, I'm going to use this to hold this up. And I'll start to walk you through what gold leafing is all about. So gold leaf comes like this in very, very thin sheets of metal Ooh, between there. There's me. That's some glue on my hands and it's already affected the gold leaf. So you bring the leaf over. I don't pretend no one's ever shown me how to gold leaf. I just kind of figured this out myself. So if I'm doing it wrong, tell me about it. Um, so you start to lay the gold leaf over. See that? Look at that. Now, this isn't going to be perfect coverage because the gold leaf will crack around the contours because it's not, it doesn't do compound curves very well, but I can go in and apply it to places where it's not with a slightly stiffer brush and slowly go in and detail. Yeah. Oh, I love gold leafing. I love doing this. So you'll see I'm, I'm taking whatever hasn't stuck down and I'm using it in other locations. I'm slowly building up the gold leaf, right? Because the first layer is going to stick to the, to the glue. And then if it breaks anywhere, that's just an exposed bit of glue. And you can go in and slot in a little extra, extra leaf. Now I'm going to bring in an extra sheet here for the second side. Oh, okay. It came apart more than I thought it would. You'll see I'm being quite, quite bold about this. And it's because the gold leaf is only going to go where the adhesive is. So all this overflow will be easy to remove once I've determined that I am properly covered. The nice thing is, while gold leaf itself is quite expensive, fake gold leaf, not as expensive. One thing that can be tricky is getting it into cracks. You can do that by laying, there you go, yeah. Putting a piece of gold leaf above the crack and using a brush to force, force it in there. Now you can see I'm doing the fun. Oh, oops. I've got some exposed areas there. Yep. So you see, I can pick up some gold leaf with the end of the brush and lay it right where I see a little black spot. Now, normally I should have undercoat this with red. That is the standard undercoating for gold leaf. I know that those of you who know how to do this have been screaming that for a little while now. But again, I didn't want to spray paint this first. I just want to go right over this. You go on faith that every time you see a bit of exposed glue or the darker color, you can go and hit it with a little gold leaf and you'll find glue under there 
that the gold leaf will stick to. That's not always the case. I've got some here that's not perfect, but that's okay. This is, this is a stand-in sword and a mighty fine one. But you can see right there. So you can see right there how I can feel that the glue is still a little wet or still a little soft, but see that? It's still quite flexible. And there's not a paint finish I could have done that would have given me that amount of flexibility and that amount of time. So there is the gold leafing part of this equation. Look at that beauty. I'm gonna put my gold leafing supplies away and now it's time for the silver section. To apply the silver paint, I'm gonna use a couple of different techniques. And I'm gonna use a brand new silver, which I have not played with before. But the uh, first technique will be using a pen and the second technique will be using an airbrush. Actually, I think I'm gonna use the airbrush first. Um, What I'm doing here with a scrap piece of styrene is I'm making a quick mask so that uh, I don't get any overspray on anything that's important to me. Ah, this is why I love working with styrene. It's great stuff. So here's how my mask will work. I do that and I do that and then I tape those together and lo, I won't get any silver overspray on my gold leafing and I don't have to stick tape to my gold leafing which would peel it right the F up. I am going to use this brand new Malto um, Super Chrome airbrush uh, paint. Ah, there it is, that's what I wanted. If you're gonna do any serious airbrushing, serious airbrushing is such a complicated term. Um, there are people out there who are artists with airbrush and they use double action airbrushes. Double action means you control the amount that you're spraying with pushing down and you control the spread by pulling back. That's double action. I will tell you in model making, there are very few people that use anything more complicated than a, a, a simple badger airbrush. Um, this is a single action. I can set the amount of spread just by adjusting this right here. Psh, 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 psh. It's much simpler than I think some model makers make it out to be, but that's fine. If you want to go more complicated, by all means do it. Just know that in film, the, te the techniques are all optimized for speed and efficiency, and I've carried those home. So I've got a simple uh, airbrush. I have a uh, regulator hooked up to it so I can hook it up to house air pressure, but I don't need house air pressure. So, you know, I only need like 
probably 40 PSI, 30 PSI for something like that. Um, there we go. Um, I haven't broken out my airbrush in months, so it's probably clogged. So I'm just going to just see. I'm going to... Yes. So my airbrush is, in fact, clogged. So we're just going to clean it out a little bit. Oh, you get an airbrush cleaning lesson all at once. I'll be right back. Lacquer thinner. This little pointy thing is the sole of the airbrush right here. This is where uh, where it does all of its business. Um, airbrush, oh wow, that's bad. Oh yeah. Airbrush works on the Venturi effect. Um, it pushes air past an open line and that air moving past causes, uh, the Venturi effect causes paint to be drawn up, cause a little bit of a vacuum, a drop in pressure. And the paint sucks up into that tube, into this little needle valve. Um, in order to equalize that pressure. Um, and I can feel I've got, I, I uh, really left this in a state last time I used it, so. Oh, I've seriously boned myself by not having a um, pipe cleaner in here because that would be the fastest way to clean out this, uh, this nozzle, which you can see is covered with paint every time I stick the, uh, Gross. That is nice. The action is smooth. The parts screw back together smoothly. Let's see. Okay, so now I have to put this back together. There we go, a fine stream. Yes, oh, and I want to adjust that back down a little bit. That's a nice steady stream. Awesome, let's just make sure I'm not gonna end up with any paint globs that are not the color I want. Good steady stream, awesome, awesome. I, um, I must say, this is all my fault. I did not clean my airbrush the last time I used it, and that was me being a dummy, and now I'm paying for it. Sorry about that, present me, says past me. All right. Now, this is the stuff that I'm talking about. It's called Malto, M-O-L-T-O-W, not to be mistaken with the cocktail, which is just a bottle of gasoline with a wick in it. This is called Liquid Chrome 20 Year Edition, and Malto makes these chrome pens that actually are pretty freaking chromey. I wanna hit this blade with the stuff because it's pretty robust, so I've actually bought their refill pack, and I'm gonna stir it up and I'm gonna airbrush it onto this blade and hope that I get some really, really good chromey effect on it. I don't have to have a chromey effect. There's no one who's gonna look at my costume and think, ah, great costume. Too bad his sword isn't chrome enough, but it matters to me. So I'm gonna 
take the extra time. There we go. Just make sure we're fully stirred up. Let's see here. Okay, I can see it in the end. Oh, it's good and liquid. Wow. Oh my God. It looks so chromey. I can't even tell you. Um, this stuff has the prop community very excited because it is both a excellent chrome coating and seems to be quite robust. So here we go. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit, but the first thing I have to say is holy crap. This is the silverest silver I have ever come across. I am kind of totally blown away. I just used a lot of it on this blade. I, um, I set my regulator to about 30 pounds per square inch of pressure. I set my uh, spread on medium and I went through a lot of it. Uh, it seems to wanna go down in a single wet coat and then be set, which makes total sense. Um, I'm gonna clean out my airbrush right now, uh, make sure I'm super clean, uh, and then proceed to double check this and see how, uh, see how I like it. Holy cow, I'm just on a cursory examination of this sword. Holy crap balls that is ludicrously shiny for a paint. I don't know of a rattle can paint that puts out a coat that that's, that's that shiny. That looks like metal. It looks good to you on camera. It looks just as good to me in person. I'm kind of blown away. All right. We have let this sit overnight. It looks beautiful. Ooh. All right, amazing. Um, I leave a little bit of a fingerprint if I touch it, but it seems pretty robust for an overnight cure. I'm really freaking impressed with this silver paint. Molto, oh, M-O-L-T-O-W, holy cow, I love this stuff. Um, I have one more thing to do. That is, um, the handle gets a little silver. That's, uh, that's kind of how Excalibur works. The handle gets a little silver. So I want to lay the blade down in a way that doesn't end up getting it really dirty. So give me a sec here. <laughs> it's the last of my paper. All right, so. That is totally looking like a silver wrapped sword handle. It's totally selling. This chrome paint really kicks the light in a way that's just substantively different. I'm really digging this stuff. Mm, okay. One has to stop somewhere. This is a really, really lovely stand-in for Arthur's Excalibur for my Comic-Con Arthurian walk. Um, I'm actually gonna pack this in a kind of a unique way. I think the paper is probably the best way to store the, ooh, I don't wanna touch that just yet. I think the paper is probably the best way to store this right now. So I am going to, there we go, like that. Give it a little bit of that, and over here.
goes in this bad boy. And there we go. All right, that is it. The sword is done. That's the last part of my costume. I will see you guys in San Diego.